as literature for oscillators, I can recommend you the chapter 12 to 12.5 in the book called Microelectronics from Cedra and Smith. The basics behind oscillators are building on the so-called Barkhausen criterion. And to understand the Barkhausen criterion, we need to model an oscillator as a loop. You can see that loop in the block diagram down here. The output of the oscillator is a signal called Y here. We can trace back that signal Y as the multiplication of the input signal of the block A with the transfer function of the block A and therefore we can write Y equals A times the input signal on the block A here. That pink signal is the summation of X minus the feedback signal on this node. And that last node we can further trace back as K times the multiplication of Y. So we have the pink signal, which is the input to the block A, and also the output of the summation block here. And that output of the summation block consists of X minus the purple signal, which is K multiplied by our output of the loop. That equation is very similar to what we had in the buffer amplifier, and we can solve the transfer function of Y divided by X to be A divided by 1 plus K times A. Note that Y and X are signals in the Laplace domain, as we have the underline, and the transfer function A is the forward path, also called the amplification, and K is the feedback factor. Now the Barkhausen criterion for oscillation says that that transfer function, the closed loop transfer function, Y divided by X, needs to approach infinity at the desired oscillation frequency, which is here called the complex oscillation frequency S0. And for Y divided by X here to approach infinity, we need the denominator to be zero. Therefore, if one plus K times A needs to be zero, that means at that frequency, K times A needs to be minus one. The multiplication of K and A is also called the open loop, as you can open a loop by cutting any arbitrary signal here and trace the loop back from before the cut to after the cut and what we meet is k multiplied with a and then we are back to the cut. Note that the minus sign in the open loop transfer function is not taken into account. As we are expecting for the Barkhausen criterion, the loop to have negative feedback, which is indicated by exactly that minus sign. If we put a numerical example to that, if Y is one volt and we have the minus 180 degree phase shift from the Barkhausen criterion here and another minus 180 degree from the minus sign, that means through the loop, we are getting actually that one volt from the output back and it's shifted by 360 degrees. So we actually get two volts at the output as we are adding it up. Now those two volts again go through the loop. We have 360 degrees phase shift. So that means that the output is getting added up with another two volts. And now the output is rising to four volts. And the 4 volts get fed back to another 4 volts, so we are rising to 8 volts, and so on. And that way, we are approaching infinite at that frequency. For the spectrum at the output of Y, that means that the tiniest input of X is getting multiplied with infinite, and therefore the amplitude of the signal at that frequency is going to rise and rise and rise and therefore we have a stable oscillation. 
Now let's have a look at the transfer function of a specific oscillator, both in the Bode plot and in the S plane. First of all, let's look at the diagram on the left hand side, the Bode plot, and compare it to the diagram on the right hand side, which is the same transfer function just drawn in the S plane. The Bode plot has the amplitude on the y axis on the upper graph and the phase on the y axis of the lower graph, and they both share the same frequency x axis. The diagram on the right hand side is plotting the real part of the transfer function on the x axis and j times the imaginary part of the transfer function on the y axis. At the very low frequencies, here shown at 0 0.01, the gain here is a little less than 20 dB. Actually, the numerical value here is around 18. 18 dB on the logarithmic plot on the left-hand side transfers into a factor of 8 in the right-hand side. The phase in the left-hand side is 0. On the right hand side, the transfer function is represented as a vector from the origin towards the graph. So the face of that vector is also zero and the length of that orange vector here is exactly the same height as we have in the amplitude diagram in the Bode plot. At the frequency 0.1, the amplitude looks about the same on the logarithmic scale and the phase has slightly turned towards negative. In the diagram on the right hand side, 0 0.1 is here. Also here the amplitude got already a little bit smaller because now we are plotting the amplitude of the transfer function on a linear scale. So the length of the vector has actually decreased. And the angle that we see here is also turning towards negative. At a frequency of approximately 0.6 Hz, the transfer function reaches minus 90 degrees, which we can read out on the right-hand diagram through the new vector at that frequency. The minus 90 degrees are showing up in the angle over here. Note that we hardly can see any change in the amplitude of the Bode plot in the left hand side diagram due to the logarithmic nature of the scaling of the y axis, whereas on the right hand side we can see that the length of the vector already has decreased to about a 5.5, where it originally started out with 8 at the low frequencies. In the Bode plot here, that is a decrease from 18 dB to around 14.5 dB, which is hardly visible on a scale from minus 100 dB to plus 40 dB in a logarithmic diagram. The interesting point for the oscillation is happening at the oscillation frequency F0 here, which is about 2 Hz in this diagram. That is where the amplitude of the transfer function is 0 dB and the phase has reached the minus 180 degrees that we needed from the Barkhausen criterion. In the S-plane plot, the amplitude of the transfer function is 1, which corresponds to the 0 dB from over here. And the angle is also minus 180 degrees. The amplitudes of all frequencies above are continuously falling on a logarithmic diagram, and the phase is even turning further by another 90 degrees, which is all compressed in that little bump up here in the diagram on the right hand side. So from the S plane plot, we get a zoom into mainly where the frequencies make the biggest changes and for constant frequencies and low amplitude changes the information is better visible in the Bode diagram. 
for Barkhausen's oscillation criterion, the point where the transfer function is crossing minus 1, that means on the logarithmic scale we have 0 dB and minus 180 degrees defines the frequency of our oscillator.